And so tonight, we want to move down to chapter 10, verse 32, and I want to talk with you about the antidote of apostasy, the antidote of apostasy. And these few things that the writer of Hebrews is going to give us, amen, in these next few verses are as though it were remedies, y'all, remedies uh, to keep us away from falling away from Yahshua Jesus, amen, and it's real important. So we're going to talk about four points, and I'm thinking that we're only going to do one or two this evening. Might even be one, amen. But the four points, just by way of a roadmap, number one, remember the former days. Number two, recompense of reward. Number three, patience. And number four, faith. That's the four points, amen, the four antidotes of apostasy. And so let's begin with our first point. The first way to stay away from falling away from Yahshua. Remember the former days. As we look at verse 32, look what the writer of Hebrews says. But call to remembrance the former days in which after ye were illuminated, you endured a great fight of afflictions. And so the writer of Hebrews is saying, if you want to stay away from falling away, if you want to stay in the faith, in the new covenant, in Yahshua Jesus, he said, you're going to have to call to remembrance some things. You're going to have to call to remembrance some things. All right? And that's one of the weaknesses of being human. Amen? We forget things. We forget things. Amen? Amen? But the beauty about being human is we can remember them. Come on, give God some glory. Amen? All right? And so the first thing he tells us we're going to have to remember, he says we're going to have to remember the former days. Somebody say the former days. All right? All right? When he says call to remembrance, this means to carefully think back, to look back, to play something back in your mind like you had it recorded on DVR or on VHS or on one of them cassette tapes we used to record off the radio with. He said, he say, play it back. Play it back. Think back carefully. Reconstruct the whole thing in your mind. Go back to where you was in your mind. Hallelujah. He said, reconstruct the whole thing. Amen. He says, call to remembrance. What does he want us to look back on? What does he want us to reconstruct? That's going to keep us away from falling away. He said, call back to remembrance the former days. This phrase, the former days, means when you first got saved. Remember when you first got saved. Remember the days when you first met the Lord. Remember how excited you were about God. How on fire you were about the Lord. Remember how you were so excited to come to church. Amen. Remember, hallelujah, how nobody could tell you anything about serving God. Remember how, hallelujah, nobody could tell you anything bad about the house of God. Anybody hear me up in here? Remember when, hallelujah, you, you, you prayed more. You read your Bible more. You woke up in the morning more. You had sweet communion with Christ. Amen. It was like you couldn't stay in your bed when you knew your closet was free and you would go in that closet and pray to him. Anybody remember those days? Remember when it was sweet with the Lord? Huh? Huh? Come on now. There's nothing wrong with remembering those days, you know. In fact, it's something right to remember. All of us have a sweet spot in our life when we serve the Lord a little bit stronger. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? And the heart of the believer should always be, God, get me back to that place. Get me back to that time, God. When I had sweet fellowship with you, God. Huh? He says, you want to stay away from apostasy? Remember the former days. How often you used to pray. How often you used to read your Bible. How often you used to fast. How often you used to fellowship with the people of God. Huh? How often you used to witness to people. Huh? You couldn't go anywhere without telling somebody about the Lord. Anybody hear me up in here? We were riding around the other day, amen, and our kids began to ask us questions, Jen, amen. 
And they began to ask us questions about all of y'all. And they would ask us, they say, well, how Miss Harvey came to church? All right? And they say, say, how, how Miss Iola came to church? And how Jay Malvo came to church? And what happened with Brian? How Brian came to church? How Miss Chancy Noel, how Miss Noel came to church? And me and my wife, as we was riding through town, began to reveal every single one of y'all testimonies that we could remember. All right? How did Miss Bridget get here? Huh? Anybody remember the former days? All right? When he first grabbed your heart? It seems like we can get so clouded with the stuff of church and we forget about the savior of the church. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? And I want to do a video series. And they asked me, they say, well, Mr. Tyrone came to church. They asked me that. I want to do a video series, Malvo. Listen to me as I cast vision. I want y'all to get out there in the foyer before church and after church. Maybe you and Brandon, amen, and, and Sean White, amen? And I want y'all to begin to ask people. The first question we're going to have, we're going to do a litany of different questions, but we want to hear from people. And the first question is, how did you come to Philly? Who invited you? Mark, do you remember who invited you? Who invited you, Mark? James Parker? Come on, give God some glory, amen? Who invited you, Brandon? Your mama, huh? Brittany, that was your mama too? Your mama too? John, that was Brittany? Yeah. Miss Suzanne, who brought you here, Miss Suzanne? But you don't forgot the lady name. She didn't invite you to church and you don't forgot the lady name. But, it, but listen, you ain't come for her. You came for Jesus. Anybody hear me up here? Jen, who invited you? Pat and Sandra Williams. Pat and Sandra Williams. And you, in turn, invited Paul. Huh? Huh? Anybody hear me up in here? Jen, who invited you? My mama. Your mama? <laughs> Tyrone, who invited you? Dalton. Dalton. You see that? Crystal and, and Brian, who invited y'all? Was it Dalton too? Amen? Hallelujah. Now, y'all don't, don't make me want to do it because, let me see here. All right? Because Ms. Michelle brought in. We, we should say everybody in the church stand up if Ms. Michelle brought you here. No, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. Be like half the church. Right. <laughs> I'm just joking. Monique, who got you here? Who? Lucky? Look at that. Look at that. J. Malvo, who got you here? Your wife? Hallelujah. Well, you did good, J. Malvo. <laughs> he married a girl that brought her in the house. Thank you, Lord. Oh! Miss Iola, who got you here? I came from Chantel. First lady. First lady invited you. Huh? Billy Clay, Mr. Meek, who got y'all here? Was that day in Albertson we met? Huh? Thank you, Lord. Come on, give God some glory. Huh? Patrice, big brother. Y'all don't have to answer. Y'all don't have to answer. Y'all don't have to answer. Listen, man. Y'all remember those days when y'all was pulling people in? You remember them former days? Days when you wasn't worried about who was talking about who and who hating on who and who not working the nursery like they should and who. Co, who brought you here, Co? Oh, they all jumped on you, huh? I know Brother Dedrick was one of them. Yes. Praise the Lord. That must have been a good one now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He said, remember the former days. So we, we, I, we, I want to do a little video series. And we're going to play it before church and put it on our website. Because when you remember the former days, it do something to you. Who you pulled in church and who pulled you in church. And when you remember the former days, it's got a, it's got a, it's got a, ooh, an, an exciting, hallelujah, uh, 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 component to it. Make you want to go out to Albertsons again. Huh? Hallelujah. I don't know if they still got an Albertsons, but. Somebody say, it's got to be more. 
There's got to be more to this than this. You see? He said, remember the former days. Because, you know, sometimes, y'all, we can get cold, y'all. We can get cold. Especially when we start to get blessings. You know, blessings make you cold. Blessings make you cold. Now, we come to the Lord. We serve the Lord. And he blesses us. Because the Lord is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him. You understand what I'm saying? So he rewards us, but when we get too many rewards, the rewards begin to cool us off. He told Israel all the time, he told us all the time, when you come into your land and you get these houses and these vineyards and you get all this stuff, he said, don't ever forget. Don't ever forget. It is the Lord thy God who gives thee the power to get well. You understand what I'm saying? And a lot of times, amen, we done prayed harder in the shotgun house than we prayed in the big house. Huh? We done prayed more, amen, in the car that never stopped running. Well, you turn off and it just keep going. We done prayed more in that car. God, let it turn off. Don't let me be embarrassed here, God. Then we do in the, in the Cadillac or the Lincoln that we, now we got outside. He said, remember the former days. And I'm not telling you this to, to condemn you, no. Because I'm preaching to myself right here. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Somebody say, there's got to be more. There's got to be more than this. Come on, give God some glory in this house. Amen. In Revelations 2, 4, as he speaks to the church of Ephesus, that was his problem that he had with Ephesus. He says in 2, 4, he says, nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee. Why? Because thou hast left thy first love. You're not chasing after me like you once was. Somebody say, ouch. ouch. How many people can be real in here and say you ain't chasing after him like, he, like you first was? Amen. We got so many blessings, called, so many responsibilities. Sometimes we don't have time for the one who even blessed us with it. Can we have church in here tonight? Somebody say there's got to be more. He said, You've, he said, you left your first love. Look what he says. Look at the result of this. Look at how you get back. He says, what? What's the answer? How do we get back? He says, remember. That's the first step to getting back. Just remember. Just remember. You know? Just remember. If you was lost in the mall, hallelujah, just remember where you left from. Just remember the route you took. If ever you're lost, just, just remember. In the woods, if you could just remember where you walk, huh? If it's early in the morning, you'll see your trail on the dew, the dew on the grass. Somebody say remember. You see, remembering is important because wherever you left God at, he's still in the same place. Woo! He's still in, he ain't left. He's still in that spot. He's still there. And what he, what he does is he waits for us. That's why he say, listen, he tell him, he says, remember, therefore, from whence thou art fallen. Because where you, where, where you fell from, that's exactly where he at. He says two things. Repent. Tell God you're sorry. God, we sorry, God. And you give us all these blessings and we would somehow get so busy with the blessings, God. That we're not giving you what you deserve. He said, repent. And then he says, and do the first works. Stop right there. The first works? What is that? Huh? God is saying, go back to doing what you started doing. Ooh. What you used to do when you first got saved? Huh? What you used to do? You'd be in that prayer closet crying when you first got saved. You'd sit in that car and listen to worship. Amen. Hallelujah. They'd have to come get you out of that car. Huh? What was your first words? What did you used to do? 
I know me, man, I get in that Bible and I read whole books of the Bible at one time. Start with one chapter. I'm supposed to be just reading one chapter. Then read the whole book. And just continue on to the next one. Huh? Somebody say the first works. What did you, what you used to do for the Lord? What was your first works besides reading and praying? Huh? Did you share the gospel with people? Did you invite people to church? Huh? You see? If you could remember the former days, then you can go back to the first works. If you can go back to the first works, then you will not fall away. Come on, give God some glory. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. But also, look what he says in 32. He says, but call to remembrance huh, the former days in which after you were illuminated, he says, ye endured a great fight of afflictions. And this verse is interesting, Frank. Watch this. The Lord is telling us, don't just remember the former days, the good days. Because the good days is not the only antidote to keep you from slipping back into the world. He said, but go ahead and remember the bad days too. All right? He says, remember the former days, but he says, in which after you were illuminated, you endured a great what? A great fight of afflictions. All right? Because all of our days when we first got saved, all of our days wasn't good, y'all. We've had our battles. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? So just don't remember the good days. Remember the fight of afflictions as well. All right? Remember the struggle. Remember the suffering. Huh? Remember how the Lord showed up and showed out for you when you ain't had nothing left. Anybody hear me up in here? Well, Pastor, what did I have to fight? I had to fight temptation. Huh? Remember when you first got saved, all that baggage you came in church with? All the different drugs and prescription medication, the different gambling problems, the different, hallelujah, uh, 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 fornication problems, amen. All the different problems you came in. Do you remember the fight of affliction? Anybody hear me up here? All right? And how the Lord come through. And, and hallelujah, how he fought your battles. Anybody hear me? How he took this away and that away and this away and that away. Amen. He knocking them out one at a time. Amen. Bam to marijuana. Bam to the club. Bam to this. Bam to that. He says, listen, in order for you not to fall away, remember your fights. And remember who fought your battles. And remember what he got you through. Amen. Because if he got you through those things, he can get you through these things. Anybody hear me up in here? The devil will make you think, amen, that you're lost. That you'll never be able to look up. That somehow, amen, he got the upper hand on you, amen. And you ain't going to be free. But the devil is a liar tonight. Amen. Oh, yeah, devil, this is how we fight our battles. We remember. We remember the good days and also the fight, the affliction that the Lord got us through. It's just not spiritual affliction and fights with temptation and deliverance, but it's also persecution. It wasn't free to come here and serve the Lord. You know how many family and friends turned their back on us? You know how many people talked about us? You know how many people don't call us no more, don't hang with us no more? You know how people feel when I say, yeah, you can come to my house, but you can't do this, that, and this other thing? Huh? Oh, yeah. We done been afflicted. We done been talked about. But the Bible tells us, yea, all who are godly shall suffer persecution. Anybody hear me up in here? He said, remember your fight. He said, remember your fight. And as you remember all you gave up for the Lord, why turn your back on the Lord now? He done got you through some battles and you done fought. Why turn your back on the Lord now? 
That's like a prize boxer, amen, getting to the round right before the last round and giving up. No! Uh, the fight is almost over. Why are you going to quit when you done got through the toughest rounds? That's what he's trying to say. He said, remember the former days. Remember the fights. Remember how the Lord got you through. Remember all the things that you gave up for the Lord. Huh? And he says something interesting here. He uses this word. He says, but call to remember the former days in which after you were illuminated. Stop right there. After you were illuminated. Amen. That word illuminated. Amen. It means after you were enlightened. After God brought you out of darkness. After he woke you up, amen, from your sleep, amen. Some commentators say this means after you were saved, but others say, amen, that you're on the brink of salvation. You're right up close to it, looking the son of God in the eyes and in the face, having all recollection, recollection and knowledge of who he is. You are illuminated, the Bible says, right? And you need to understand, amen, that when you get illuminated to that level, when God done brought you out of darkness, huh? That a battle takes place after that. All right? Matthew Henry says this. He says, after you are brought to the light, the darkness of earth and of hell, they join forces. They confederate. They become confederate against you. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? Oh, no, 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 you don't get saved, amen, hallelujah, and, and, and don't enter the battlefield. Anybody hear me up in here? All right? After you get saved, amen, after you are illuminated, after you're brought to the light, the darkness, the forces of darkness of earth and hell, they join forces, and they join forces against you. All right? Matthew Henry says, man's natural state is darkness. This means that when you're born, you're born in the dark. You're born in sin. You're born not knowing God. You're born, amen, not having an understanding of God. You're born estranged from God. You're born an enemy of God. You're born in the kingdom of darkness. You got to get translated in the kingdom of night. Like, by default, amen, hallelujah, that's what he means. The natural state of man is darkness. By default, hallelujah, we, we, we born into the kingdom of of darkness are you with me for there's none righteous no not one all right and you need to understand this that 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 while you in the kingdom of darkness man's natural state is darkness watch this and as long as you are in the dark Satan and the world will not disturb you anybody hear me up in here all right if you in the dark if you unsaved if you hadn't been brought to the light, the devil not going to fight you. He not going to try to destroy you. He not going to, you, you understand what I'm saying, because he already got you. You, you already destroyed. You, see, on your soul, amen, the devil hang one of those things we hang out the hotel room. When we don't want them people to come clean up. What you hang out there? What do it say? Do not disturb when you lost, that's what the devil hang on your soul. And he tell all his demons, don't disturb them. Let them sleep. Because they sleeping. Let them dance. Because they sleeping. Let them, let them party. Because they sleeping. Let them drink. Because they sleeping. Let them keep getting high. Because they sleeping. Do not disturb them. Because they already in the darkness. We already have them. So when we talk about the fight, when we talk about the struggle, the lost man can't even hear what we're saying. Can't even hear what we're saying. What struggle? What fight? You see? That's because you ain't been brought to the light yet. You see? It's a fight when you're in the light. It's a fight when you're in the light. You see? After salvation, salvation brings you to a state of light. And the powers of darkness will vehemently and violently oppose you 
when you come to the light. That's what Jesus was saying. He said light has come into the world. But men prefer darkness instead of light because their deeds were evil. And every man that do it evil hated the light. Because the light, amen, reproved them of their deeds. Listen to me here. All right? Listen to me. Yes, it's a fight. Yes, it's harder to live the saved life. Anybody hear me up in here? Yes. But let me flip that around for a second. All right? If you are fighting... You should praise the living God right now. If you being tempted, if you being stressed and oppressed, if you trying with the devil on one side, the world on the other, you feel the pressure, you should praise the most high God right now. Why, Pastor? Because if there is a fight, that means that you are in the light. Oh, God have mercy. I'm in the light. I'm in the light. I'm in the light. I'm in the light. Do you hear me up in here? See, because when you're in darkness, you do whatever you want to do. And there's no conviction, no type of stress, no struggle that's going on. If there's a struggle going on, if there's a fight going on, if you say like Paul, when I want to do good, evil is always present. If there's a fight going on, the good news is, woo, you are in the light. Come on, give God some glory up in here. Paul said the things I want to do, that's what I, woo, God. You understand what I'm saying? He said, after you were illuminated, he said, when, when you brought to the light, the fight begins. The fight begins. You see, the devil don't want you to begin to praise God for the fight. You got to praise him. Oh, devil, hallelujah. Hallelujah, devil, I'm praising God. Because I'm saved, I'm born again. Because if it was the old Omar, if it was the old this one, if it was the old that, I'd have been run out and done. You understand what I'm saying? But there's a fight there. There's a fight there. You see? Yes, there's a fight there. You see? When you've been illuminated. When you've been brought to the light. Come on, give God some glory in this house. Woo! You see, partly while you were made a, a gazing stock in verse 33. You say you were made a gazing stock both by reproaches and afflictions. And the writer of Hebrews is saying, man, you see that word gazing stock, amen, that's, that's a public spectacle. That gazing stock was a, a thing they put you in, amen, hallelujah, uh, in the middle of town where people would come and watch you. <laughs> hallelujah, they look at a gazing stock, they'll put you on a platform on stage, Amen. When we, get staged, when we get saved and brought to the light, we on stage, yo. We on stage. We like candles in a dark room. We on stage. All right? And sure, people going to watch us be blessed, yeah? But they're going to also watch us go through tough times. Anybody hear me up in here? They're going to watch us go through reproaches and afflictions. They're going to watch us go through that. All right? And they're going to watch us have to make tough decisions for Christ. Huh? I done seen in here. Huh? People that done released the street life. They done made a commitment to Christ. They're not going to sell another drug. Amen. They're not going to go and hustle on the street. They, they made that commitment for Christ. And then the bills come due. Then they start turning off lights and stuff. Then you can't pay your rent. You can't pay your mortgage. You know what I'm saying? And, 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 and the hustler saying, man, I can go make this thing in a night. But Christ. But Christ. But Christ. 
And everybody know I'm in church. Everybody know I'm about Christ. I'm, I'm being tempted to go out, amen, and I'm suffering this reproach. I'm having to move because I can't afford. They turn the lights off, and I ain't got no food in the refrigerator. And all my former hustling buddies, they see me on this gazing stock, and I'm here, and I'm suffering reproach and affliction. But I'm doing it for Christ, and I'm... Woo! <laughs> I'm doing it for Christ. And they're going to watch me and some of them may laugh. Amen. But this present suffering ain't got nothing worthy compared to the glory that's going to come in the end. Anybody hear me up in here? He said, we done been the gazing stock. We done suffered reproach and afflictions for his name. You see? Oh, yeah. He said, hold on. You done suffered too much for him now to let them go. Hold on, you done gave up too much for him to let him go now. Hold on. How you gonna let him go now when the blessing is around the corner? How you gonna do it? You in the last round, boxer. Don't let him go. Don't let him go. You on the last leg of the race. Don't let him go. You done suffered too much. You done suffered too much. It's like going to the register, paying all the money, and turning around and saying, I don't want the product. Oh, no, friend. Oh, no, give my change and my product. <laughs> he said, you were made a gaze in stock, both of reproaches and afflictions. And partly while you became companions of them that were so used. And this is good because the Bible is telling us not only did you suffer for Christ, but you watch your close companions suffer for Christ as well. We watch people close to us suffer for Christ, get afflicted and suffer reproach and go through trials and struggles. And as we watch them suffer and go through things and never let go of Christ, how that would be if we let go of Christ after we done watch them suffer and not let go of Christ. There's some people in here, mama and daddy suffered, but still ain't let go of Christ. How you going to let go of Christ when mama went through more than what you went through and she ain't never let go of Christ? How you going to let go of Christ in a three bedroom, two bathroom, air condition? How you going to let go of Christ? When you don't watch them suffer for Christ. He said, don't ever be an apostate. If you just remember some things. You're going to always, hallelujah, stick to the righteous road. You remember the good days. You remember the struggles. You remember the struggle in others. Amen. And it's going to equip you. Never to turn back. What excites me sometimes is when I read biographies from past apostles and, and past titans in the faith. And I hear and read about them walking through cities and being hit in the head with bottles and, and people waiting in their home for them and, and wanting to kill them and hit, hit, hit jobs, amen. And they're they, they doing all this and they never letting go of Jesus. How in the world would it look for us, huh? Who could walk around town like we won't. Suffer no type of physical danger because of our love for Christ. Not yet. How would it be for us to let Christ go? When they crucified Peter upside down and he wouldn't let him go. When they put John the Apostle in hot ball and tar oil and he wouldn't let him go. When they impaled some of them. When they cut some of them in half and they still wouldn't let him go. How that would be if we let him go? No, my friends. No, my friends. All you got to do to stay with Christ is remember the former days. Come on, give God some glory in his house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Listen, I'm going to call for the worship team for a little bit. Amen. And we're going we gonna to just have a little bit of altar time. I, I'm going to pick up point number two next time, if y'all don't mind. But I think we're in a place right now where we had a pivotal point. We're in a place where we was when we first came 
into the promised land and we was getting all the blessings. We're in a place where we could forget. And in my spirit, amen, I don't want to ever let God look down and say, you serve me better broke. I don't want to ever let God look down and say, you, you sing better in a cage. When you was locked up, you did more for me than when you was free. I don't want ever God to look down and say, you prayed more in smaller houses and less vehicles. Because you know how that would tempt God to bring us back to that situation? We got to remember the former days. So listen, I'm going to get down off the platform and kind of let the worship team kind of do their thing and well, I might not get down from the platform all the way down. But I'll stand on the side right here, though. You know? And if you will, if you want more from the Lord, if you want those old days, if you want the former days, if, you know, the Bible says, hallelujah, to get back to the first love, the first step is repentance and just saying, God, I'm, I kind of dropped the ball on this one. But tonight, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. You ain't got to bring me back to Egypt for me to serve you. Ushers, y'all can open, y'all can open. You ain't, got to, you ain't got to pull me back in the projects for me to pray. I don't have to live in my car to open my Bible, God. God, you could put me wherever you want to put me. In the hills and in the valleys. And I'm going I'm to praise you. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to love you. So listen, I'm going to let Brandon kind of do their thing, but the altar is open. Can we have a little altar time? Can we get back to our first love tonight? Come on, come on, the altar is open. Come on, the altar is open. The altar is open. You won't come up here. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Yes, God. Mm -hmm. As Pastor was preaching the word, it just brought me back to the woman with the alabaster box. Mm -hmm. See, the disciples were sitting around the table because they were used to being around Jesus. Mm -hmm. And so she came in and they was looking at her like, what is she doing? Mm -hmm. But she came down and she fell on her knees at the feet of Jesus and she broke the box. She didn't just open it, she broke it. She gave him her most expensive worship and I believe we need to get back into a place of worship again. And because of what she done, Jesus said she showed me much love and he ain't never told nobody that ever in the Bible. And so tonight we're gonna give God, show God much love with our worship. No holding back anything. Giving them all tonight. You are my daily bread. You are my daily bread. You are. You are my ever-present help. You are my closest friend. You deserve. You deserve all my praise. Me.
pain I was carrying because Jesus, you showed me a true love as you're all that I'm living for. I'm letting go. I'm letting go of all the hurt and pain I was carrying because Jesus, you showed me a true love, and you're all that I'm living, all that I'm living, all that I'm living, I'm letting go. I'm letting go of all the hurt and pain I was carrying because Jesus, you showed me a true love, and you're all that I'm living, all that I'm living, all that I'm living for. Goodbye to all my pain. There's no more requited love. Cause you're all that I'm living so long, so long to my heart. And goodbye, goodbye. To all my pain, there's no more, no more unrequited love. Cause you're all that I'm living. You're all that I'm living. You're all that I'm living for. Yes, God. You're all. tells the church he says go back to the first works he never really explained what the first works were because he knows that we know what the first works are he knows that we know exactly where we left him he knows that he knows that he knows amen that you know exactly what you gotta let go exactly what you gotta change Exactly what you got to get back to doing. You already know that. I ain't, I ain't got to preach that to you. You know where you left him at. And you just got to get back to that time. Get back to that place. Get back to that communion with the Most High. If you could, just, just pray with me right now. Say Yahweh, Yahweh. Most, high God, Most High God, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. For not serving you like I used to. For not spending time with you like I used to. For not worshiping like I used to. 
you haven't changed. You are still good. It was me who changed. The more you gave me, the less I loved. Forgive me, Lord. Bring me back to the place where I once was. I'm letting go, God. Everything that has come between me and you. I'm ready tonight. I want relationship. Communion with you, God. I want my heart to burn again for you, God. Just in case you don't know, you are my pearl of great price. You are my treasure in a field. Just in case you don't know, God, you are all I'm living for. It's not the houses, it's not the cars, it's not the clothes. They could take it all away. You are all that I'm living for. I'm sorry if it don't look like that. But I'm here tonight to declare that you are my first love. And I'm coming back. I'm coming home. I'm going back to that place where you found me. I'm going back to that place where you found me. I'm going back to that place of worship. Where it's all about you. <laughs> I'm going back to the heart where it's all not about me, not about me. I'm sorry, but it's all about, it's all about you, all about, it's all about you, Jesus. Come on, give him some glory in this house. Come on, he's heard you. He's heard you tonight. He's heard you. Come on, he heard you tonight. He heard you tonight. Oh, yeah, he heard you tonight. Don't ever think that you can't have both. All right? He's going to bless us, y'all. He is going to bless us. But we got to get to this balance where he give us everything we need and throw in some wants. But we never stop seeking and loving him. Amen? Amen? I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That's his will for your life. That's his will for your life. To fill your life up with things that will bless you. But you'd always have that heart of worship where he's the center of your joy. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Pray with me now. Say, God, I'm not perfect. In fact, I was born in sin. I admit, I admit I've fallen short, I've fallen short but, I believe but I believe your word that you love me, you love me unconditionally, unconditionally and you died for me, died for me on, Calvary, on Calvary and you rose from the grave, and you rose from the grave 
on the third day, the third day. And, you me. and you promise me if I call upon you, call upon you. you'd forgive me and save me. Save me, Lord. Save me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Forgive me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. Fill me, Lord. And use me, Lord. And use me, Lord. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give him some glory. We're going back. We're going back to the heart of worship. To the heart of worship. To the heart of worship. Oh, yeah, you could be blessed. Abraham was blessed. Isaac was blessed. Jacob was blessed. But they still remembered the Most High. The Most High. May the Lord bless you. May He keep you. May He cause His face to shine upon you. May he lift up his countenance upon you, be gracious to you, Woo! and bless you with shalom, shalom peace. Come on, speak shalom over one another before y'all leave. Love y'all. Be blessed. Shalom. Shalom. Here I am to bow down. Here I am to say.